The reason you are sitting here once again with me today is because you trust me. And in this video, I'm going to share with you exactly why you should not be concerning yourself with all of the bud, all of the rubbish, all of the nonsense out there today. And that's why in today's video, I am going to look at the market from just a trading perspective. Nothing else, no news, just data. And now you will see how a trader looks at the chart. And that's why a trader doesn't really care about news. They just care about why the chart is doing what it's doing. And then news comes after. And of course, news makes the chart move, but the chart will always tell you what the news is. Okay. Now, or if the news is going to move the market up or down or sideways, whatever it ends up being, welcome back to the Crypto Bliss Show. I'm Kiara DeCast. Thank you for being here with me once again on the channel today, guys. I did a pretty chill video for you guys yesterday. I'm definitely buying. I have been buying and I'm going to show you I'm buying. Even if my trades are a little bit down, we are going to see a very, very, very beautiful space. Now, with, with my trades in mind, you guys have to recognize that there are a few things that we need to make sure we are focused on. So go check that video out. That is if you're buying on spot, long term, holding your position, hodling hard. That is where you need to just stay focused. If you are trading with me using my Bybit link down pinned in the comments of this video for you and in the description below, as well as my uh, Bitflex links then you guys will be expecting some of the craziest gains using leverage, of course, and some incredible bonuses in there of nearly up to $100,000. Don't miss out on those bonuses. Click them, check them out. Now, guys, I want to just draw your attention just to today's beginning data. And it's just for today. This is all short term stuff that is busy going on. But today in the last 24 hours, we finally see some crazy, crazy, crazy moves in the market here today. That is absolutely phenomenal. Wonderful news. I like it. I think there's a lot more moves to come. Um, we may enter into a particular trade later on in this session. So make sure to stay tuned. Um, but for now, the cryptocurrency market cap is up 0.6% for the day at $1.63 trillion, 80 billion in trading volume, a few coins pumping today. Some of these coins, I don't know what these coins, these top two coins are here, but I mean, 350% pump is massive. Uh, Bitcoin is up 2.6%, Ethereum is up 0.8%, BNB is down 1.2, Solana is up 7.4, Ripple's up 1.4, Lido up 0.8, Cardano up 0.3, uh, sorry, 3.5, Dogecoin up 3.5, Avalanche, 11.2 so guys markets are choppy okay that is short term think of the ocean the ocean doesn't say stay choppy for its entire life it goes through cycles where it's choppy then it goes through a cycle where it's wavy then it goes through a cycle where it's calm and then so on and so forth and that's why you guys can see right now that i'm actually pretty calm and i'm chilled and I'm not going anywhere and neither should you be because the data that I am going to show you on this chart in a moment, you're going to want to stay tuned right to the end because this, this chart is powerful and it will give you guys the confidence you need to know where the market is heading. Now, today the fear and greed index, and if you guys were listening to me on this video yesterday, go check it out. I'll leave it in the cards for you, put it in the card for you guys. I did say to you that we would fall below 50 because of the down sloping move we continued to have yesterday, right? There we go. 48. Super simple. Let us go and have a look at some of the basic charts of Bitcoin. Right now, we are on the monthly time frame. And we currently have six days, seven days left of this month, meaning less than one week, one week to less than one week. All right. If this candle does not pull back up and close up in the green, 
we will very likely see a little bit of a capitulation or a continuation of a downtrend until the 38,000 level because it didn't quite touch 38,000. Um, so that was my level and at the absolute worst down here. So we did close the CME gap at the 30 uh, at the 41,000 level where we broke out with this candle over here on the daily time frame. Um, but one thing I do want to point out to you is that on this chart, you can see there's a strong wick all the way up to this kind of just beyond 49K level, kind of 49,500 level. What happens after we've had a major pump, a major pump, we have a red candle with a higher wick that's pulling down, causing sell pressure. Are we about to see a bear market? Is the rally over? Very, very much, who knows? Because none of us have a crystal ball, right? And this is why I want you to stay tuned because I have a crazy chart that I'll present to you, the data that will give you a super confident answer. Okay, so here is Bitcoin. Um, over here, you can see the monthly wick. Normally, this is called a topping tail candle and essentially topping tails generally end with a very much major crash. Now, just bearing in mind that up on the journey, there's generally crashes of up to like 80%. So we're on the long-term time frame here with the monthly chart, right? So you guys on this chart, I've shown you a few times how we develop these patterns, etc. Are we developing the next potential set of patterns? This is a very, very high possibility. And that's why I would like to say to you that on this particular chart here, we did make a pump from the bottom all the way up here to the 618. Because if I take the level from the top to the bottom, there is a 618, which is at $48,486, my white line here. That's exactly where the topping tail kind of spiked above and immediately pulled back down, which means that there is a tremendous amount of freaking resistance there, okay? Which means there is a possibility we could see a pullback down all the way down here to the 30,000, 32,000 level. I do keep saying this to you, it's not impossible, okay? However, we have also got a very strong support level right here at this 38,000. And that's why I keep saying to you guys that potentially that is pretty much where we find a stable position. Now, what kind of time frame does that look like? Well, make sure to stay tuned because in the next chart, I'm going to show you guys some crazy information. But for now, Make sure you guys are smashing the thumbs up on the video. That is truly appreciated. Let's get on to the next chart. So to show you guys very much, I am down in my trade over here. But you guys can see that I'm not fooling you guys. I'm telling you I'm buying. Okay. I'm buying. I bought. Even though we dropped, I bought some more and I bought some more. And I've got another wick in case we do wick down just a little bit more. Okay, even though I have a buy there, my next buy entry level is, is right down here at the 38,500, uh, 38, sorry, 38,888 level. So if you look at the my, my buy entries and you just look at this current candle here right now, you guys can see actually. So there's my entry level. That's why I'm down a little bit on the trade. I'm okay to be down on the trade. I don't mind, guys, because look at where we currently are on this um, Fibonacci. If I pull the Fibonacci from the top, okay, down to the bottom that we just hit yesterday, because I'm sure you guys would agree that that tapped the bottom just pretty much there on the white line. Look at where it tapped. Cool. We could come down still a little bit, but we do have the RSI. Very, very, very oversold already since here, which tells me that it's time for a reversal, which means that the likelihood of us actually breaking out of some downsloping resistance here, okay, if you guys want, I can just draw that kind of simple line in there for you just to look at this. I'll delete it now, but that is a potential line. And as you can see, 
horizontal resistance is where we need to break through right now. If we get rejected and we fail, the likelihood is we come down once more, very much so at least to the 37 level. If that is the case, I will just move my stop loss under this trading zone and continue to enter into my position. So I continue to pull my price level of my position down with me. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, let me know down in the comments below because Monday evenings I do trading videos where I show you a little bit more about that stuff. Now, generally, when we have a pullback, we like to see the 618, which is back up here at the 45K level. So if we're to break up, we probably break up, probably end up doing something like that, which ironically also meets this level of upsloping trade resistance, which by the way, we have had for a very, very, very long time. Um, so if you have a look there, okay, that's the bottom end of the channel. There's the top end of the channel. Look at that level of resistance that we actually ran into, guys, um, up here on this channel. So we try to break through, we fail. We try to break through, we fail. You know, and I drew this differently to so many other YouTubers. We try to break through, we fail. We try to break through, we fail, and we pulled back down. We haven't quite pulled back down to the bottom end of the um, the channel yet. If we were to do so, like I keep saying, 32 is the target. But honestly, guys, this horizontal box here is a very strong support level. So I doubt we're going anywhere below the 36.7K level. That's my personal view. I'd like to know what you guys think. Let's go and have a look at the third and final chart. The one that I've actually been wanting to show you because this is the one that matters. Now, you guys can see what I've done here is that each cycle, these vertical um, green bars are where the halving dates were. The um, Fibonacci I took from the top of the market. I placed obviously the bottom on the bottom end of the market, but I placed it at the halving date and what happened from each halving date so that we can understand what actually happens beyond the halving because even up to the halving once we hit the bottom we literally go up non-stop yes there's a pullback yes there will be a continuation of the pump yes there will be resistance once we reach the all-time highs okay my horizontal line here is the all-time high it took us 951 days or two years and six months, okay, to go from the peak, the all time high of the previous cycle to the halving date, okay, to the, uh, to the halving date, okay, which then gave the last, uh, there was a pump always up to the halving date from the bottom. Then under a halving date, we either had a kind of a drop and guys, look at the drop, okay? The drop from the top to the bottom was 37%, okay? We'll talk about that in a moment. Now, beyond the halving to the breakout of the all-time high took 221 days from, 20, uh, uh, from 2016's halving date to the breakout point. It took 221 days or seven months and six days. Now, guys, it took me a long time to draw this chart out for you. So I hope you guys are still watching because I'm going to shock you about this cycle. It's very interesting. Although I do say that this cycle is very likely different because we do have the ETFs. Okay. Which means that different money and institutional money can come into the space. Whereas previously, we didn't have that. So there's two components I would like to share with you. Perhaps the bull market, the cycle gets extended, firstly. And secondly, perhaps the diminishing returns thesis is invalid because if through the ETF launches 
And this particular ETF being the most profound ETF launch in the history of all ETFs, why would this slow the momentum of bringing institutional capital and liquidity into the space, creating a different hype cycle, creating a longer cycle that breaks the previous cycle's typical routine, right? Okay, bear that in mind with what I showed you. From the breakout of the all previous all-time high, once it breaks out, I'm not talking about rejections here, it's still rejected and then it made a pump, okay? Of course, it's going to do that. It's a resistance level. If you know anything about trading, that is resistance, which then gets converted into support, which then gives us the ability to absolutely pump a mental. Shout out pump a mentals down in the comments below if you love that. All right. So from the breakout from the previous all-time high, once it breaks that level, to the all-time high of the next cycle took 295 days, which ended up being nine months and six days. Do you guys see what it is that I'm showing you here? Okay. So on average, the bear cycles, when it reaches the peak to when the halving date is, is the longest most patient period of time you have to have in crypto. That is the time you want to be accumulating whatever it is you possibly can while the prices become discounted. So moving on to the next date, okay? Uh, the next Bitcoin halving was 11th of May, 2020, okay? Look what happened here. All right, so from the peak to the halving date took 876 days. This one was 951. That's already somewhat like 90 days, 80 days shorter in the cycle, okay, of bearish capitulation, okay? Because I would just call this capitulation, even though it's a bear cycle, okay? I want you guys to have a look that on the way up from the bottom, we literally were going up. And then we had a crazy crash, okay? Because obviously some people knew about what was about to come. And then we had the final sell-off and then a major black swan event, which couldn't, anyone, no one really could have predicted. You know, I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a conspiracy acknowledger and i realize that there are things out there that are absolutely making sense okay and you should do your own research guys but this essentially without the black swan event very likely from here probably would have continued to go up like it did in the previous cycle but this was a black swan event call it manipulation call it whatever you like but once we reach that and very interesting on the rsi here we were on the way down on the RSI over here, we were on the way down, okay? Then the price action started to make its move up. This took 203 days or five months and five days, whereas this one took 221 days. So this was about 17 days shorter to get to this breakout of the, pre of the previous then high, okay? So once that happened, okay? From the previous all time, you see it rejected twice here as well. Just giving you guys some heads up for what may happen in the future. Just by the way, if you liked it, you know what to do. And hopefully you guys that are watching this that have not yet subscribed or subscribing to the channel because you guys are going to want to see this. I'm going to bring you more crazy charts. Keep subscribing. Now, there's two things about this previous uh, all time high cycle. Okay. First of all, from here to uh, from here, sorry, from the breakout to then the peak, the actual high, high of this peak, bearing in mind we had a double top, one peak and two peaks, I'm giving you the highest price point on all of these cycles. But I have two different scenarios here for you just in this part because we had a double top. Your first part was we had from the breakout of the previous all-time high on my horizontal white line, 
we had an 11 month or 344 days, 11, uh, which was 11 months and eight days to that peak. Okay. If we were to take the first peak, okay, which generally would have been the cycle's peak, that would have ended up being the shortest bull market in history with Bitcoin at 134 days. Uh, four months and seven days after breaking out of the all-time high, guys. Four months is not a bull cycle, okay? And that's why you guys need to realize that the bull cycle starts once the bottom has been hit. So once the bull cycle, um, once the bull cycle has been hit, you guys can see that from the bottom to the top, is the whole bull cycle, which is how the cycle lasts. The bull cycle isn't when you break out of the all-time high. It's when you start creating higher highs and higher lows and you bottom out. Okay. Now, the same thing is happening here. Now, very interesting because this bottom didn't break that peak, whereas this bottom broke that peak's high. Okay, not by much, but it still broke it. It sat on it for a long time. It broke it. It sat under it and then immediately it pulled back up and then retested it to confirm that we have finally finished the bear cycle and a breakout rewarded us with 172% gains over 2023. Guys, freaking awesome, would you not say? Now, we are coming up to our expected Bitcoin halving date which is on Wednesday, the 17th of April. And between the peak of the, the previous cycle to that point is 889 days or two years and four months. This one was 876, two years and four months. This one was 951, two years and six months. So as you can see, it's pretty much around the same time that the market sits in a bear cycle. Call it 2.5 to satisfy a happy medium in the bear market cycles from the peak to the Bitcoin halving. But, okay, take a look at my chart, watch the video again, calculate where the bottoms are, and actually see how long the bear markets last. It's generally about half a year. Look at that halfway point between there and there, and there, sorry, there and there. Okay. So a bear cycle lasts kind of like just over a year, maybe. Okay. Maybe like a year and two months, a year and three months, guys. Now, with that being said, all right, we right now, um, until if we take the average of this, okay, and this from when we broke, um, when we finally were able to break through the all-time high from the Bitcoin halving date, it, the average after the halving date was about 200 days, more or less, give or take, which equals six months and nine days. We are still far away from that point of breaking the all-time high. And yes, this cycle might be different because of the ETFs, okay? So... I'm just giving you a data trading view. That's all I'm giving you. I'm not focused on the news, not focused on any of that. I'm just giving you the idea of what these charts could possibly be doing. Now, with that being said, currently from where we are to get to the point of to where we break out of the previous all-time high from today's date when I post this video is still going to be about 284 days, which is nine months and 10 days. Now, guys, this tells me that we should ignore the noise, forget the FUD, forget all the rubbish, and just sit back and be patient. Because even if we're accumulating Bitcoin here, 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 down here, Within about 284 days, by the time it hits about the 5th of November, okay, the likelihood of us breaking the all-time high 
is very, very probable based on previous cycles data. Okay, doesn't all history doesn't always do the same thing, but there's a possibility that it can rhyme, and that's why I'm doing this. Forget diminishing returns because this cycle undoubtedly is very, very different. Okay, so with that being said, you guys can see that if we were to start turning around from where we currently are, or even if we pulled down from the bottom and you were accumulating here from the 30, kind of 36,000 level to the all-time high, you would make 91% gains. So why would you get fudded out of your crypto right now over the course of 2024 before you actually double your money? let alone breaking out of the previous high, okay, which is this level, and now bringing us to the average time from the breakout to the, pre to the high would give us kind of 344 plus 295 kind of gives us an average of uh, 344 and 295 divided by two, uh, so this, sorry, this one is actually wrong then. Uh, so this one is about 300 days, I would say. So this is 300 days, let's, let's round this off uh, to, to 300 days over there, okay? Which would actually take my date out. So now I'm gonna do this with you. So 300 days from there, so you guys can see how I did this, 300 days, okay? would take us to um, okay 300 days I, I don't even have it in here it's not even in 25 so January February we don't have beyond here okay sorry guys it's not coming beyond here but that's somewhere in 2025, April, May, June, May. Yeah, so it's not going beyond this. But that's probably ending up sometime in November, kind of October, November 25, which is what I've previously predicted. Now, 300 days would actually give us about nine months. Uh, sorry, yeah, nine months and about nine months and about nine days, 10 days. Okay, all right, that's about what that would give us over there. Okay, so from there to there. Okay, that's the time frame that we're expecting this to unfold. Um, I wish I could give you this, this actual date, but I, I do believe it was the end of October, guys. So I hope that you guys are seeing this, that by the time we reach there, between here and the next high is still about 584 days away. So why would you be like selling your crypto? Why would you be fighting out of crypto based on poor quality news where we know the likes of even the biggest banker in the world, JP Morgan, talks rubbish about Bitcoin and then is secretly buying it behind doors? Guys, I, I mean this with great love and respect. Don't be fooled out. We have no idea what this next X potential could end up looking like. But what I do want to say to you guys is that look at this. Okay. This is 4.2X. Just giving you a heads up. And it still continued to pump kind of beyond that level all the way up to the next kind of 1986 level. And maybe let's go and do this for us so that maybe this gives us a little bit of peace of mind so that we can actually see. Let's see what the 4618 does here. No, not even that, eh? Not even that, guys. But I mean, look at how accurate that is, guys, that 4618, because we definitely want that 4618. But guys, what I'm just basically trying to show you is the 4.2x multiplier or yeah, 4.6x multiplier, 4x multiplier 
just to there, let alone to there, because that looks like a double even. So it's like an 8, 10x from there. Okay. The same thing happened there. Look at the 4x. Look at the 4.2x over here. Okay. So the 4.2x there. Now, if we were to get up to this 4.2 level, that is about $242,000. Now, generally, we could go a lot higher than that because of the ETF. And I've been calling about 285 to 300,000, which is not much higher than this. So guys, diminishing values are very unlikely to occur in this cycle or any cycles going further in Bitcoin, especially because of the way institutions are bringing in trillions of dollars in liquidity, guys. Okay, and Bitcoin currently is only a tiny market cap of $783 billion. I would just like to give you some sort of perspective okay that um if we were to take okay 20 trillion dollars in the crypto space divided by 783 billion okay that will give us a 25x from today 25x times 40,000 and give us a million dollar Bitcoin. So Kathy Wood is talking about a million dollar Bitcoin by 2030, okay? Even a million point five is the base case, as, as a blue case scenario. Guys, that's a $20 trillion market cap. And you're investing $40,000 into one Bitcoin today to make a million dollars profit in like five, six years. Don't be ridiculous. That's life-changing money, okay? Invest in Bitcoin today, no financial advice. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I truly appreciate it. If you have, obliterate the like button and absolutely destroy the subscription button too if you are not yet subscribed to the channel. I truly appreciate you guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. You can see why I'm relaxed. I feel like a, a guru. Okay, let's go and have some fun out there today. Much love to you all, you benevolent, beautiful souls. We will see you later.